Hey peeps, we are in the midst of Advent 2. We're working our way towards Advent 3. Uh, today is Thursday. And uh, so, you know, hey, do you guys know that at your nearest St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Stewart, we have an Advent wreath? Don't do this when it's lit. Um, you'll lose your hair. Uh, you know, we started off first. You got one candle. The first one is going to be for the hope, you know, the hope of the return of Jesus Christ. Um, and then you got uh, peace, you know, we're examining the peace of Jesus in our lives or the lack of peace. Uh, then you, uh, this Sunday, which will be joy, you'll find out why it's pink. You'll find out more about joy if you come to church this Sunday. See, magic tricks. And then uh, the fourth one is going to be love. Hopefully this wreath, pick it up, put it in your house, be lighting it with your kids, your friends. Suggested donation of $10. Um, and uh, pick one up. Uh, but why do we do this though? It's not just for a fun tradition. We're doing it to prepare our hearts. Like, like John the Baptist says, make clear the path of the Lord, make his path straight. And we need to do that as we're walking the path this Advent towards the manger. Because when we don't take this time of Advent to really prepare our hearts in a Lentian fashion, then, then we uh, will just go to a big birthday party for Jesus. And we want more than that. So um, we're using Advent. It, it's this thing the church gives us to really reflect and to shed all that is cluttered and gotten in the way of us to really receive the rebirth, to be reborn into Jesus Christ um, on Christmas Day. Um, and I think today's reading, if you follow uh, the daily readings, hopefully you do. If you don't, it's cool. You got more time uh, to follow the daily readings, the Book of Common Prayer in the back has year one, year two, or in year one, you can look at the readings that we follow through our daily offices of morning prayer, noonday prayer, and evening prayer. For a new, a morning prayer, we had the gospel uh, from Luke 22. It's, it's a great little piece here. It's, it's We have Judas, who is um, about to sell out. And then at the same time, Luke gives us Jesus preparing the Passover meal, getting ready for the Passover meal to redefine what the Passover meal means. Uh, and, and so we had this, but thrown into it is this idea of Judas, of Judas um, succumbing to his fear, succumbing to the fear of the Roman authorities, succumbing to the fear of the religious authorities and giving up and saying, I don't think that Jesus is, is, is strong enough or capable enough. We're all going to get slaughtered and killed and let me just give up. And if we don't take this time to examine our inner Judas, then we're going to miss a big piece in this journey too. Because how many times do you and me, do all of us, succumb to our fear, and fear guides our faith? That's scary. Where it is fear that is in the front seat, and, and maybe we're riding shock on the fear, not, 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 not Jesus. And so Advent, this week, before we get to this Sunday, look at where fear, a fear of something that's going on in your life, maybe a funky relationship, something at work, a temptation, an issue, where is that number one? Where is your inner Judas coming in and allowing fear to be your guiding light? Um, and how do you shed that? How do you invite Jesus into that and say, God, I am struggling with this. And I'm going to confess to you that this is kind of running my life or having way too much real estate in my heart. Help me to shed this, come into my heart, take this over, rebuild, restore, um, and, and give me the tools. Uh, to do that through this Advent journey. God bless you. We'll be doing it with you. We're all in this together. And um, we'll see you this Sunday.